there, Accelerated Math 78 students. We are now starting our um, video for Lesson 10, and it is called Solving Equations Using Algebra, and it can be found on page 25. So here we go. Um, again, just a quick reminder, this is the last lesson of this module, and then we're going to be moving on. So um, Solving Equations Using Algebra. This is really fun. It's a lot like yesterday's lesson in the sense that you are going to have to read the problem and then you have to figure out how to find the answer, okay? So our goal is today we will practice solving equations using algebra, algebra by substituting variables and using mathematical properties, okay? So the question I want you to be thinking about in this problem is what are the additive inverse and multiplicative inverse and how do they help, okay? So basically what we're going to take a look at, you need to know by the end of this lesson what an additive inverse is. You also need to know what the multiplicative inverse is and how they help solve these problems because knowing that is really, really, really pertinent to solving equations using algebra. So we're going to try it, okay? Um, Susan and Bonnie are shopping for school clothes. Susan has $50 and a coupon for a $10 discount. Each shirt costs $12. Susan thinks that she can buy three shirts. Bonnie says she can buy five shirts. Who is correct? So it is your job to find out which girl is correct in what she's saying. And um, also I think another thing would be good is you to figure out what it would be. All right, so before we look at her either of their equations, let's um, write down the important information. So Susie and Bo Susan and Bonnie are shopping for school clothes. Susan has $50. So we know the total money that we have is $50. And a coupon for a $10 discount. So does the discount come off of the $50 that she has, or does the discount come off of the price of the shirt? That's what you need to think about. So basically, her $50 has to pay for shirts. And then the discount, everybody, what is a discount? It means price that comes off of the shirt. So I would say we would subtract the discount, right? So it says each shirt costs $12. So we know the shirts are $12. We know that the discount is $10, and so now we have to figure out how many um, they can buy. So the they can buy, how many would be the shirts, because we don't know how many there are, we just know that they cost $12. So we have S for shirts, right? Is everybody following what I just did? So I'm thinking that the equation needs to be set up like this. That's what I'm thinking. And it makes it an algebraic ex equation because you're using this variable because the unknown information is the shirts. So let's write it again. $50 is what Susan has. It's $12 per shirt. And Susan has a discount of $10. Does that equation right there that I was able to write look correct to you? I hope you're shaking your head yes. Okay, so let's figure it out and solve it. Okay, notice that we are not even doing what it says to do in here. We are using our brain to figure out the correct answer for us first. Then we will go back and check on Susan and Bonnie and see if they're right. So our build and undo chart, I know, it's, it's a really good way to organize your thoughts. That's why I would like you to use it. So looking right here at this equation, what is the variable that you see? That's right, you should have said S. Okay, now looking directly at S, what is the first mathematical operation that is happening to S? The first mathematical operation is that we're multiplying it by 12, good. What is the second mathematical operation that is connecting it to the S? We're subtracting 10, good. So now we have to undo to try to get to the variable. So what? remember when we undo, we work backwards and then we also do the opposite. So going backwards, we start down here. What is the opposite of subtracting 10? We're gonna add 10 to both sides. 
What is the opposite of multiplying by 12? We're going to divide by 12, and hopefully by doing that, we will be ended up with just having s by itself. All right, let's try it. So the first step is to add 10 to both sides. Okay, remember we do this because we're trying to get s by itself. Negative 10 plus 10 creates our zero pair, 0, 0, 0, 0, so we're zeroing those guys out. 12s plus 0 is still, everybody, 12s, okay? 50 plus 10 is 60. All right, so we did that one. Give yourself a check. The next step says to divide by 12. So I'm going to divide this side by 12 and divide this side by 12. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other. 12 divided by 12 is 1 times s, right? And then I get 60 divided by 12 is 5. And then 1 times s gives me an answer of s equals 5. So that means, according to our own work, that means that Susan can buy five shirts. Okay, that's what we figured out. Okay, let's go back to the story. So it says, Susan and Bonnie are shopping for school clothes. Susan has $50 and a coupon for, ten, for a $10 discount. Each shirt costs $12. Susan thinks she can buy three shirts. Bonnie says she can buy five shirts. Who is correct? Well, I think we figured out who is correct. I think we could say that Bonnie is correct. However, we need to look at their equations because your job is to be able to look at their equations and essentially be the teacher and figure out who is correct. So Susan's equation says 12n plus 10 equals 50. Whereas Bonnie says 12n minus 10 equals 50. Well, what I would like you to do is I would like you to solve Susan's the way we just did with the BU chart, solve Bonnie's with the BU chart, and then figure out from there who is correct. We already know what the correct answer is, but I want you guys to practice it without me and see if you've got it. Don't forget to use the BU chart. It's really, really helpful. Okay? All right, when you get done with that, we have one more to try, and that is the end of our lesson, believe it or not. See, these guys are really, really easy. And this is one of the reasons why I love algebra, because it's just straightforward and you just get to play with math. Okay, one more. This one's a little bit trickier. Andrew's math teacher entered the seventh grade students in a math competition. There was an enrollment fee of $30. It costs $11 for each package of 10 tests. The total was $151 how many packages of tests were bought. So your job is to find out how many actual packages of tests were bought because it gives you the cost, it gives you the one-time fee, and it gives you the number of tests to the cost, and then you're supposed to figure out how much, how many actual packages you bought. So we're gonna do what, kind of what we did before, read it again and look for quantities, Andrew's math teacher entered a, the seventh grade students in a math competition. There was an enrollment fee of $30. So does that happen every time we buy a package of tests or only happens one time? You're right, it only happens one time. So the way that I like to um, show this is I say there's a one-time fee. So I'm gonna put plus $30, one-time fee. I only have to pay it one time. It costs $11 for each package of 10 tests. So to draw a picture right here, let's pretend that I have a package, 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 package. There are 10 tests in there, and it costs $11 for those. Okay. Then it says that the total, so we have $11 per package, right? plus the one-time fee of $30, and all of that equals the total cost, which is $151, um, dollars. okay? So I have a question really quick, because I'm sitting here trying to see if I missed something or if I made a mistake. Does this quantity right here really have anything to do with what we need to know? What do you think? Andrew's math teacher entered a seventh grade student, the seventh grade students in a math competition. There was an enrollment fee of $30. It costs $11 for each package of 10 tests. 
The total amount of money spent was $151. How many packages of tests were bought? So kiddos, do you think that that 10 is really important to anything in this problem right now? My answer is no. And the reason that I'm saying no, that it doesn't really matter that there are 10 tests in each package, is do we know how many seventh grade students she enrolled? No, we don't. So this is just kind of what we call a distractor. It is put in there to see if kids are going to get fooled and try to incorporate that. But we really don't need to incorporate the 10 tests because we don't know how many kids are actually being in the competition. And so basically what they did when they enter, put that in the information is they did that to see who's going to get distracted and who's going to mess up. Okay, Your job is to figure out the number of packages. That's the key word. You're trying to figure out the number of packages only. Not how many tests were bought, just the number of packages that were bought. Then, once you know the number of packages, you can tell me exactly how many tests, but it doesn't ask that. It doesn't say how many tests were bought. It says how many packages of tests were bought. Um, so, anyway, I don't want you to get distracted by that 10 test part. Um, so, I'm leaving it up to you because I want to see what you can do. If you need help remembering what to do, I will give you a hint. The only time is use your BU chart, okay? Isolate the variable. What is the variable? What was the first mathematical operation? What was the second mathematical operation? And then remember when you undo, you work backwards. Backwards and opposite to undo it. Okay? All right, my darlings. Hopefully that's easy for you. Um, we will be taking our test soon, so hopefully you're good to go. All right, I'm going to let you... Oh, no, 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 no. One more. We've got to revisit our question so we know what our goal was today. Today we will practice solving equations by using algebra, by substituting variables, and using mathematical properties. Um, what are the additive inverse? We didn't really even talk about that. I'm sorry. The additive inverse means you add the opposite. Additive means we're adding. Additive. We, are, we did kind of talk about that with the BU chart. Additive means that you add inverse is a fancy math word for opposite. So what are you actually doing when you're using the additive inverse? Opposite, okay? It means that you're adding the opposite. So that's what we do with the BU chart, right? We added the opposite. Go back here. We added the opposite. So that's what additive inverse is, okay? Multiplicative inverse is the exact same thing. So you're multiplying, right? And then inverse doesn't change. Inverse means opposite. Okay? So we're multiplying the opposite. All right? Um, how do they help? Basically, the reason that they help is they um, give you an easier time with problems. And you just use them as you need them. Okay? So, yeah, that's what I know about this one. I think we're good. If you have any questions, let me know tomorrow and we'll go over it together. Okay. See you later.